It's showtime. Hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? My name is Jake Scheidel. This is a podcast about reality television and friendship in which I ask my best friend Thomas Powell if he did indeed watch a certain reality show last night. Hey, Thomas, if you uh, if my voice sounds not as excited as it usually is, it's because of this finale. <laughs> yeah, uh, because of how good it was, you're just exhausted. I'm just exhausted just from those three, four straight from days. How good, from how good the finale was and how much we all liked it. I just don't have the energy anymore. Uh, and because of that, I am drinking an energy drink. I think it's a, a prime time to do a bottle check here in the opening of the episode. I am not drinking anything currently. What? On finale week? You're sorry not to, drinking sorry anything? Sorry to let you down. This is a bottle check. I'm drinking... Got this at 7-Eleven also this morning. Uh, it's called Quake Orange Fusion. That sounds terrible. It's actually not bad. I've never seen it before. Didn't know what to expect from it. It could have been worse. And that's been bottle oh, check. It sounds like a real ringing endorsement. It's orange flavored, so I like it. There's not uh, any sugar in it. I like that. And that's that's my review of... Bo- uh, bo- uh, what's it called? <laughs> Quake Orange Fusion. Quake Orange Quake Orange Fusion sounds like a fucking video game. Uh, I think the brand is Quake, and then Orange Fusion is the flavor. <laughs> it's an expansion pack to Quake 3. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, did you watch Survivor Edge of Extinction last night? Just like the wide winged dove sings a song, sounds like she's singing. Ooh. Uh, uh, yes, unfortunately. I. This was a really big week for us for content. Uh, and the Edge of Extinction finale is the thing I want to talk about least with you right now this week. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but so I guess we'll just get through it quickly because that's why the people come. Mm-mm. Uh, the title of the episode was "I See the Million Dollars." What do you think? Uh, I think it set the tone for the episode, and that it is not very good. Yeah, that's fair. I also like who said that. I don't remember anybody saying that throughout the episode. I also do not remember anyone saying that. I wish I remembered less of this. No. I wish I knew more of what happened in this finale so that I wouldn't live in this sense of maybe it's good. Uh, at the uh, Extinction Challenge, it's the first thing. They have to build a rope bridge, which was really cool, uh, and then do some other regular challenge stuff that ends in a maze where they had to drop two balls in a thing. Aurora, sure. Aurora was the first of the maze, which is exciting. What if she came back immediately? That'd be cool. But then, yeah, that'd be interesting. But then Chris won. Joe almost won, and I was Joe very excited, and then I was also. very mad that Joe didn't win. Yeah, I would have. Because I would have been right. You would have been right. And it would have been way more interesting. Yeah, it would have been the whole point of the season coming to fruition. Um, but instead, Chris, a guy, wins. That's his whole character. He's a guy. He's not even the fireman guy. That no. was Eric. <laughs> He had less character than either of the first two boots. He's going to take his family sailing or whatever. That's great. Okay. I have nothing against Chris. It's just like, who is this person? Anyway, Jeff talks to everybody about leaving the game now because they're not going back to Extinction. And it's actually incredibly sad. I thought it was going to be really monotonous, but it turned out to be really upsetting. (laughs) In like a real genuine way for me. Especially Reams. Well, no, actually, Reams was nice. Reams said that she came out here to prove something to herself and that she's proud of herself, so that's nice. Um, and then we go back to the live studio audience, and Jeff interviews Joe on the stage briefly, and he says, You're an enigma with kids, with women, men, families, and Joe just says, uh, Thank you? <laughs> <laughs> And then Jeff tells him that he needs to cut his hair if he ever wants to win this game, which was funny banter, I guess. And he did. He did do it. Oh, he did? Apparently. I haven't seen a picture, but uh, yeah. Um, Okay, back at camp, Chris says that he has information in in case anyone wants it. Victoria doesn't trust him. Chris and Devin's reform their alliance from the first three episodes of the season a month and a half ago. 
two months ago. I just, I don't understand why they didn't focus more on him on Extinction. Like, what he was all doing. They had, like, one episode after he got booted where he was like, I'm, yeah, I'm fishing and getting rice. And that was the last we heard from him until this. It's just, it doesn't make sense. Devin says he'll play his idol if he doesn't win immunity. Chris tells Lauren that on Extinction, Kelly said that she has to play her idol correctly to have any shot at winning. This turned out to be a big deal. Then they do an immunity challenge. They win steak and cake also. Julie wins with the help of Chris. Julie and brings Chris and Lauren on the on the reward. Um, here's, mm -hmm. here's why I was... Up to this point, I wasn't upset yet. No. Uh, because I saw a thumbnail, like a screenshot from the episode, and I saw the three of them eating together in the jungle, or whatever. Uh... And I was like, oh, interesting final three, but okay, I guess that makes sense. Lauren's definitely winning this then. And then we got to this reward, and it's like, oh, this isn't the, this is not the final three. So Lauren's probably not succeeding where Chris is. And then I got upset for the rest of the episode, and still am, four days later, five days later. What day is it now? Uh, Lauren says that she doesn't believe Devin's idol is real. Later, she tells Chris that if it is real, she'll play her idol for Chris. Uh, back at camp, Victoria wants to take Chris out. Devin says that betraying Chris again is the last thing he wants to do, but it does make sense to do that. Uh, Chris received the same idol Devin's did when he came back, and then he gives half of the idol to Devin's. I, I, I have nothing to say. It's just like... It just happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. It's, it's just not. It's it's fucking stupid. It it, mm. it was it, a really bad move that threw a wrench in every other part of this finale. It it affects the game too much, and I get that they're like trying to change the game so it's unpredictable and everything. You never know how, but that, like, that's fine for the game, but it makes for bad TV, and that should be their pri main priority, right? As a producer of a television show. Like, I get that it would suck for people in the game and they'd have to scramble if somebody comes back with three days left. But if you don't focus on that person, you're making bad television. And that's the product you're making, is television. I don't know. Next season is going to be ridiculous, so... Hopefully it'll make up for this one. <laughs> yeah, really? I can't wait to talk about that, too. Uh, okay, so at Tribal Council, Rick plays his idol. Lauren plays her idol for Chris, but it was unnecessary because Victoria got two votes, where Chris only got one. Rick got three, but they don't count because of the idol. So Victoria's sent home. How did you feel about Victoria's outing? Uh, I felt bad, yeah. because she did literally nothing to deserve it. Yep. Yep, she just, uh, the biggest threat left in the game, I guess. On her way out, she tells Gavin that she's voting for him. Um, okay. And back at camp, Rick goes idol hunting again. And he plants two fake idols. And then he finds the real idol. And then Julie finds, is it Julie? This is such a failure of the other players to prevent this from happening. Yeah. How do you let him do this every time? You know he's going to do it. I have often... Uh, I, I, I haven't often complained about like there being an overabundance of idols in the game. Too many idols. But there, like at this point, there definitely are. Like This is becoming a legitimate strategy for people to get to the end. And again, it's not fun to watch. They give, they give the idols too much power... And the whole point of his idol is, like, you don't know when it's going to be played. And you don't know for what reasons it's going to be played. But if you can use an idol at every tribal council up to final five, and there is an idol that can be played every single time, then you know an idol is getting played at final five because it has to. Like, that should be the last resort for an idol play, is because it has to, not because it's, like, the only way for this person to get through. It's like... I, I, 
I made this realization a few weeks ago, and then I realized that the finale week was the same as this week. The hidden immunity idol is Survivor's version of money in the bank contract. Yeah. But the thing with the money in the bank contract is, once it's used, that's it until the next one is introduced a year later. Like, you don't get another money in the bank as soon as you lose that one. Like, you missed, you lost your opportunity if you don't get it. It's interesting that you bring this up right now. Be, oh, I, it's almost, almost like you've been thinking about it. I, 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 re, I realized this a few weeks ago, but I was like, I think Money in the Bank is happening the same week we're recording the finale episode, so that's a better time to bring this up. Yep. But wouldn't it make more sense if there's, like, a cutoff period that they're replanted? Like, there is a cutoff period of when you play it, but make the cutoff period when you can't find any more earlier. Like, two or three tribals earlier. Like, after they're played, from this point on, they're not going to be rehidden. That prevents the automatic Final Five play that's really boring. It requires more strategery. Sure. You're not jumping on board with this thought I, I may have uh, not been paying close attention <laughs> <laughs> that's all right I know that this is uh, this is new uh, new territory for me but uh, what were you suggesting the idol doesn't get the way I think w- it would work best is if the idol any idol that's played after final eight does not get replanted yes I agree it's just boring then they yeah they should be a finite resource at that point if you want to have if you want to be able to play an idol at final five you need to take the risk and save it yep yep lauren the idea that you can just keep finding them is ridiculous yeah because it's like then what's the point of the challenge like the the immunity challenge is like the main thing that should be where you get yeah why yeah why are you why bother trying in that when you can just keep finding idols yeah I don't know. It's like this this whole season. I mean, I'm not alone in saying this, but it just rubbed me the wrong way. Like even worse than Triple H did. I yeah. think maybe it's just because it's fresher. So well, the I, the other thing is Triple H. The season was bad, so it didn't it didn't yeah. sour me on it because I already knew the season was bad. True, that's a good point. Like this season started so strong when Reem got to the edge the first night and was like, "What the fuck is this?" It started so high, and it just every single week got worse and worse until the finale, and that just completed the trend. It finished the trend. It was just it continued to be bad. Uh, anyway, I don't think whatever there should be an idol for each new tribe. So the initial tribes, any tribe that's born out of a swap, and the merged tribe, those should be all of the idols. And I think. To take it one step further, uh, and I feel like you've zoned out again at this point. No, but, I'm, I'm okay. listening. Uh, the only time an idol, to make it really difficult, the only time an idol is replanted is when all of the initial idols have been used. Yeah, I could get with that. Like, you just need to, you need to limit them. Like, yeah. Yeah. It really does fuck up the game. Yeah, and it's not fun to watch then. And again, it's like you're making a television product that's for the audience. Like I I get I like when they swerve us with who's getting voted out by like not showing us necessary information. Yeah. Because occasionally that really works on me and yeah, it's like you can hit it with a twist or whatever, yeah. but that's like and the other thing too is it's just le- it makes for less equitable play. Like Yeah. How is it fair to a bunch of people to not, you know, basically put them in a position where they repeatedly can't vote somebody out. Right. I get, yeah. What's fun about that is the decision they have to make when they have to make it. But, I don't know. It's 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 just boring. It's just gotten boring at this point. And that's what's, that's what, like, why I'm upset. <laughs> just like, and the other thing is, like, when somebody finds an idol they know how to find an idol for that season. They know how the clues are hidden. They know how the idols are hidden. So they go on a roll, and again, that is fun occasionally. 
But if it happens every single season, it becomes less fun to watch. It becomes less interesting. So, Island of the Idols is coming up, and I don't feel good about that title. No, I don't either. <sighs> okay, so that's how we're going to shit on Idols on this podcast. Like, even Rob Sestranino's podcast, who, like, love Survivor, never say a bad thing about it, even they had trouble, like, being excited about this season. And, you know, everybody on that show is somebody in the Survivor universe, so they, you know, want to stay good with, like, production and everything. And even they were like, yeah, this didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, at the next immunity challenge, they have to collect puzzle pieces on a structure over the ocean. Devin's wins. Good for him. At camp, Devin's offers his hidden immunity idol to Gavin, who accepts it. Lauren suspects that at least one of the idols that they found is fake. So she and Chris target Julie. At Tribal Council, Julie plays her fake idol. Lauren plays her fake idol. Rick plays his real idol for Gavin. And Chris plays his idol. Okay. This is advantage getting, but worse somehow. Too much. Even Jeff was like, it was Jeff being deadpan, but he's like, anybody else after yeah. the four fucking idols get played? Yeah, that was miserable. I, I did like, I think Victoria raised her hand when he said that. Yep. That was very funny. Uh, Chris gets three votes uh, and Lauren gets two votes, which means Lauren is out. So, our two picks were the first two out in the Love finale. it, the first two eliminated. Yeah. The people we're rooting for all season have a really good feeling about, hey, guess what? Uh, it's good, Fuck it's you. actually good to me, and I like it. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually funny to me, and I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm not mad. Why would you be? Uh, at a, Just laugh. At a, the next immunity challenge, they have to balance out a rocking plank and stack blocks that spell out final three. Uh, I liked this challenge, actually. It was really silly. I did, too. It was very silly and very uh, surprisingly If you're going to do dramatic. this kind of challenge, this is this is what, what I can get behind. I want the final immunity challenge to be hands on a hard body like they did in the first few seasons. Do you remember where they just like have to hold on to whatever statue or whatever? Oh, yeah. I always like that. I, I like the one where they have to... Um manage the balls going through that track some motion yeah some motion is very good i like some motion a lot they kind of did it with that reward challenge a few weeks ago but it was a much smaller one where they just had to like jump through some ropes and catch a ball from the thing that had a very similar vibe but yeah some motion i think is a great final challenge but i like hands on a hard body because it is so simple it's like, literally, how long can you last doing this very simple thing? I get that it's maybe not fun to watch, but I think it's fascinating. Since Richard did, like, jumped off in the first, realizing his position in the first season, like, that's great. That's great TV. Not, not enough of that kind of challenge either, too, honestly. Like, they did a lot of those early on, and I was into it, but towards the end, they weren't really doing that many endurance ones. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's fun. I don't know. It's too many puzzles. Too many puzzles. That's it. That's all I have to say. Um, Rick, uh, Chris wins the challenge. Good for him. Rick pleads his case to Chris. Chris then helps Gavin and Julie to build fire. And then here's here's the moment where it becomes the most unpredictable finale ever. Chris gives up immunity uh, so that he can face Devons in fire making. Which is a very stupid move. Yeah, it's dumb. Uh, it's He's very lucky that it worked out for him. <laughs> so Chris finally wins the fire making, sending Rick Devins out of the game for good this time. Um, at camp, Julie says that she gave support when people needed it, so that's why she should win. Chris says that he outlasted on Edge of Extinction, which sure is the season and gavin says that he always was socially aware and always on the right side of the vote so that's good too um that's their arguments let's get into wildlife shots 
There was a bird, there were dolphins, there were crabs, there was Roland the Bat, there was a snake, uh, there was some sort of gray heron, maybe the eastern great egret, which we just talked about last week or two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that kind of. When I opened up my computer today, uh, you know how it'll give you just like default pictures from around the world of, of like locations or animals sometimes? Yeah. Uh, my computer, I opened it to a picture of a mama bird and a little baby bird both in the water like opening up their wings to get ready to fly uh like in unison and i was like oh that's interesting that bird looks really familiar i feel like we've talked about it on the podcast and then i looked at the caption it was the eastern great egret i was like fuck yeah aha (laughs) this this segment is not for naught i love it um i've learned i've i've legitimately learned a lot about nature from researching this segment every week it's very fun um I didn't research any animals this week, though, because we've covered all of them over the past several seasons. Yeah, there's no more animals to cover. And also, I don't feel like this finale deserves a wildlife shots. No, not really. I'm not even going to put the the musical stinger in for this week, because... It doesn't deserve it. It doesn't deserve it. Gotta earn that, Survivor. Yep. Uh, Okay, let's talk about Final Tribal Council. The jury seemed fairly bitter. Did you get that vibe? Yes, yes they did. Um, which would have been very... F- which is understandable, because uh, this was dumb. <laughs> yeah. I think this season, more than any of the previous seasons, would have really uh, benefited from the old Final Travel Council format. Yeah. Like, Reem didn't even say anything in this I mean, she did in the real one, but they they didn't put her on the TV show. And it's like, Reem would have been perfect. She could have had a really good question for them. Yeah. She said in, uh, like, an exit interview that her question was something about, like, how they uh, did with, like, the survival part of it. And I think that's kind of a boring question. But I think with the old format, she could have made a really good speech. The old format is a hundred times better. I don't know why they got rid That's of it. That's literal. That is mathematical. It is one hundred times better. Anyway, Gavin talks about his wife. Chris says he wanted to control this game, and he finally got to when he came back. Julie says that she had a life-changing experience. The Mike White uh, strategy. Yes. I, or, or Troy Zan, too. Uh, I love that there's always somebody in here who's like, hey, I, I loved this experience. I guess that wasn't really Mike White's final Ty kind of made that argument too Ty did Troy Zan did um I'm trying to remember what Angelina didn't really say that no Angelina had made maybe the worst case I've ever seen anyone make yeah I I <laughs> I'm like I feel bad for her because here she didn't deserve to win no but having heard her on exit press like she she recognizes the character she was in the season and she's like yeah that's fair uh, but you can tell, like, she is, like, a good, genuine person who just happened to be edited that way and maybe lacks a little self-awareness, but yeah, it's great. I love Angelina. Uh, and I was mad at her in the beginning of the season because she voted out Lyrsa, was it? Yes, I believe and so. And that was my person, pre-merge. Um, but I came around on Angelina, much the opposite of what I did with Chris where I didn't think about him in the beginning of the season and then I didn't think about him all season and then I continued to not think about him in the finale (laughs) congrats on your win Um, at no point at Tribal Council did Dream say anything another reason to take oh I already read that part Uh, Jeff takes the votes and then he does not get on the Jeff ski (sighs) another thing that they need to bring back in f- Go back to the glory days, Survivor. In fact, not only did he not get on a Jeff ski, which is disappointing, he didn't even wear the same clothes in studio. Unbelievable. Like, that's the bare minimum you can do. We're supposed do. to think that time has passed, because that's bullshit. It's bullshit. The only thing that's passed is tie, not time. That joke doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, do you stand by it? No. You know what? I know we say every week, five stars only. Uh, I think if you wanted... No. Don't you dare. 
I think if you wanted to review that joke specifically, you can tweet at me at Jake Scheidel and just say four stars. And I'll, uh, okay. I'll know that's for that joke. But if you were to review the podcast, what is it, Thomas? Uh, the, the, uh, the review that I always make people give. Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite podcast. I like it better than all the other podcasts. I give it a big thumbs up. Yep. And how many stars? Five stars only. Five stars only. Thank you. Um, okay. So he reads the votes. Uh, Gavin got four votes. Chris got nine and Julie got none. Um, so that's good for, um, Chris. He won the game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he is one of the ones who comes back for 40. Because he got voted out. Maybe he and Tony can start an alliance of people who got voted out really early in the game, but then have also won the game. They did it in the opposite order, but, you know. It's possible. Um, So season 40 is coming up. That's exciting. Devin's won the SIA award, which is now $100,000. What is what is the what is that award? The Sia award. You know how Sia always awards somebody money at the end of the season because she. How liked long them? have they been doing this? I never watched the reunion. Oh, oh, it's kind of a it's kind of like a a, a jokey thing in the Survivor lore, but uh, I don't remember who the first one was. I think it might have been Ty. She was like, I really loved your attitude and like your gentleness with animals uh i loved seeing that and i just love you as a person so here's whatever like ten thousand dollars or whatever and that was the sia money or the sia award and then she came back the next season and gave it to somebody else for just like her liking them and she gave it to davy last season uh and then this season she gave it to devins a hundred thousand dollars he took f- ridiculous. He took fourth place. He got a hundred thousand. You know how much you get for your third place? Do you get nothing? Well, no. I think you get eighty. I think Angelina said it's eighty thousand. And second is a hundred, I think. And first is a million, obviously. That's they should have told Sia like, hey, that's too much. Too much. Okay. Probably shouldn't get. Probably shouldn't get more than the person that finished third. Uh, yeah, I would think so. I, I, I don't know. What did you think of this season as a whole? I from give to it. End? I give it a B minus. B minus. If stuck the. If they had stuck the landing, I would have given it like an A minus. I I think that's really high. I think at best uh, C. All right, I'll, I'll go. I'll go down to C plus. C plus. I think it's definitely in the C range if you're being nice. Yeah. What would you uh, we we we've compared it to Triple H a lot. What would you what would you give Triple H if we're doing letter grades? I would give Triple H a D minus. Yeah. Uh because the season was bad and then the ending was bad. I thought the stuff leading up to the end. This was a a real uh real lost season 6. If we want to talk about it that way where you know the the lead up it seemed like they were they really had something and then the yeah. ending uh we didn't even really get a jump punch with this one. Uh, I guess the jump punch was Chris giving up Final Four immunity. <laughs> yeah, what is the jump What punch? is the jump punch of this season? Um, <laughs> I don't know. They, they, they said it was the most unpredictable f- tribal, or unpredictable finale ever. And it's like one... Unpredictable thing. Sometimes things are unpredictable because you don't want them to make stupid choices, though. You know, you don't you don't think that they would they would do that, right? Like the what makes sense, or like why something is unpredictable and shocking and exciting, is like the clues were all there all along. We just hadn't really bothered to put them together. But that wasn't this. It was just kind of unpredictable because we forgot the person existed. Yeah. Get Neil Gaiman to write the next season of Survivor. I'm looking at my bookshelf <laughs> and I'm looking at American Gods right now, and it's got it's got some good good uh, heel and face turns in that book. American Gods, but enough about Joe. <laughs> so Joe's coming back for a fourth time. That was basically guaranteed. Um, that was. Did you see that interview with him, or did you skip that yes. part? Yes. God, yes, that I did. was. 
I don't think they've ever gone out of their way to be like, this person will play a fourth time, absolutely. Like, before it's even official. Jeff will let him come back as many times as he wants until he wins. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, I think he's this generation's Boston Rob. uh, Which is fine. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, He's a lot more likable than Boston Rob was before Boston Rob won. Uh, Okay, my mom is texting me. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I just, I, I just texted her, did you watch Survivor? And she has texted me back. One, one text. First text. Yes! Exclamation point. I was so happy with the way it ended. What? what? I'm going to have to talk to my mom about this. Chris giving up the immunity necklace and giving it to Julia was a great move. That didn't happen, Mom. <laughs> what if... Julia was the one who was voted out, right? It was Julia in the final three, right? Yeah, she was in the final three. What if... My mom called her Julia, though. What if Chris got up and was like, I'm giving up immunity for Julia and switching spots with her now she's in the final four? <laughs> Fire building against Rick Devins was perfect. I can't disagree with that. Um... These texts are all coming in to me live, so that's why I'm being slow with it. Uh, I think that move is what won him the game. Do you think that's what won him the game, or do you think it's just the fact that he was on Edge of Extinction with the it jury? It literally for a is the fact that he was on Extinction. Yeah, that is the that is what won it for him. Yeah, yeah. It you can't you can't spend that much time with uh, what's it called the jury when the yeah. other competitors don't. Yeah, it's a completely unfair advantage. Yeah, it's like uh, in the presidency's uh, race, uh, where it's like you can't give time on a TV station to any certain candidate without giving equal time to their opponents. Yeah, like equal time. Yeah, it's the same thing, except uh, this time Survivor fucked it up and the U.S. government did it right. <laughs> yeah, our our election system that works great. Our election system. We can all agree. It's very good. <laughs> Um, what about this? Survivor college athletes versus the electoral college. (laughs) See, now there's an idea I can get behind. Uh, okay. It makes sense, it's coherent, Mm -hmm. it's a theme that everyone understands and likes. Well, because college is in both. What about this? A three-tribe format, people in college versus the electoral college versus people who wear the, uh, college sweatshirt from Animal House. Yes, okay. And that's, their entire tribe is everyone wears that sweater. (laughs) Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think it's a good idea for a season. Uh, Okay, what does my mom say? Uh, Was happy to have Gavin as one of the final three. Okay, so we can agree on that. It's always so surprising to see how everyone looks when they are all cleaned up. True. (laughs) That is true. Um, Yeah, that was fun. That was the finale. Um, Next season, oh, here's another one. I think Lauren is vying for a modeling or acting job. I wouldn't be surprised, I guess. Um, do you want to go through our points? Uh, yeah, I mean, I know you win. So. Yeah, you got one point in the finale for Julie taking third, uh, which was 47 total for you. I got that same point, uh, and then I also got a point for Devin's getting voted out and a point for Julie winning a reward. Well, Devin's didn't get voted out. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, don't be like that. Not that it matters, but he didn't get voted out. <laughs> okay, so I beat you 53 to 47 instead of 54 to 47. <laughs> and if you, if, here, now that the season's over, I'll give you that point that we argued about, oh, yeah, like, like three weeks points. ago for, like, ten minutes. So, final score, <laughs> you 48, you really had to scrap those points together, and me 53. So... I almost closed the gap on Almost. Uh, oh, here's another text from my mom. Once again, Aurora didn't get much of a chance to talk during the after show or whatever it's called. <laughs> um, okay. Next season is called Island of the I- Idols. Thomas, <laughs> did you see the preview? I did not. You need to look it up and watch it right now. It's amazing. I'm so excited to hear your live reaction to this. And if CBS wants to sue us, 
Um, please, please don't for like the audio, you know. Uh, please don't because we, yeah, pl- please don't. We haven't even started our Patreon yet. Uh, which, if you want to get in on that, it's uh, it's ten ten or no, we said a hundred dollars total a month. We will do a Patreon where we watch through Joey. Yep. Without having seen Friends. What are you seeing right now? Uh, it's Boston Rob and Sandra. They're, they're like building the shelter? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like those statues of them. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Incredible! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I love it. Man, I... There was a while where I felt like Survivor kind of... And Real World too, to a certain extent, kind of um, would flip between serious seasons and comedic seasons. And I feel like it's been a very long time since a comedic season. And I really hope that this season with the two giant busts of Sandra and Boston Rob is a comedic season. <laughs> I hope they don't try to take that too I, seriously. If they're not comedic, I don't know exactly what they're going for. I don't that's know. That's really something. That's so funny. It's like... I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe my stream wasn't the highest quality. But they don't look great they don't look exactly no. like the people which is even better that they're yeah. like bad looking yeah yeah for for the listeners if you haven't seen this um the so sandra and boston rob are going to be mentors i think we've talked about this and they're on they're on the island of the idols or whatever uh yeah and uh on the island of the idols there are two very large statues of each of their faces that are, they're kind of like bobbleheads where they like they're just almost re- they're look like them. They're really big bus. Really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like bobbleheads. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's a good comparison. Uh, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, that's definitely a person, but you're not yeah. going to recognize who that person is unless they're standing right next to it. Like, there's a reason that they tell you on bobblehead night at like the minor league baseball games who the bobblehead is for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be hard to tell otherwise. Yeah. Uh, okay, Thomas, if you didn't love the Survivor finale, let me point you in the direction of the Challenge War of the Worlds finale part one. Uh, it was so good. Like, Le- legitimately. It was so good. This season that's been pretty good all season uh, and has... Uh, is, is very good in comparison of any of the last seasons over the last few years uh it's definitely led up to a very good finale um the level of what i'm trying to say is the level of quality of season that edge of extinction was um war of the worlds followed a very similar path leading into the finale and the finale was very good is what i'm saying so here's what they had to do this was the final On a figure eight track in the desert, they had to bike and run six miles four times. And then between laps, they had to compete five deceivingly, complete five deceivingly difficult puzzles. Uh, Okay. So they bike one half of the figure eight on like these desert bikes and then run the other three miles and then have to do this really difficult mental challenge five of them um georgia passes out during the first lap and is removed from the game uh ninja natalie nearly passes out but once the medic gives her the all clear she gets back on her bike uh maddie becomes too exhausted to continue turbo nearly passes out at one point on his bike uh and then says i thought i was i was so ready to quit and i thought about my family 
I thought about my country, and I knew I couldn't stop. And he just got back on his bike and kept going. Uh, so it's very good. Uh, Maddie becomes too exhausted to continue, and TJ tells her that she's a strong competitor, but she's got to stop smoking those fucking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> and Maddie just kind of like, yeah, you're right. TJ is phenomenal. I want TJ and Jeff Probst to hang out on a podcast and talk about hosting these shows together. I think that would be very fun to listen to. It'd be an interesting conversation. I think so. Um, then they uh, all finish uh, the challenge, everybody who didn't drop out, uh, and then they wait for what looks like hours for TJ to return, just sitting in the same place on like these stools waiting for... Uh, until it like becomes dark and it, it definitely wasn't dark when they finished the challenge uh, and then they're like wow what a great final this is fantastic and then TJ congratulates them on completing phase one. Oh my god yep and then he tells them that Theo Wes and Turbo were the top three finishers and that they will form a tribunal meaning they're voting somebody into elimination during the final. Wow. Yeah. They <laughs> they think they are overcorrecting after last year's final. <laughs> where one of the challenges was walk over six feet of burning coals. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. Um, that's it for this week. I guess the, the finale fi is over. Part two is next week. My mom has continued texting me about um, Survivor. So here's a, cue, a few more. Uh, I guess Rick Devins was deserving of the SIA award. He was the most aggressive player. Sure. Uh, what I mean by aggressive is that he was the only one that actively searched for hidden immunity idols. Uh, Dad realized that he has... Dad realized that he has met Ron Clark... He was a presenter at an NHA conference. NHA is the company my mom used to work for. Uh, mm -hmm. Says he was quite full of himself. Oh, unbelievable. I can't believe that. Uh, he can tell you a story about him. I think next season looks dumb. The whole mentoring thing sounds lame. I don't know if that's in reference to. We've got to if we do the Ron Clark story, we've got to get that story. Oh, I was I was I was going to use this to transition into what we're doing next week. Next week we're watching the Matthew Perry movie, the Ron Clark story, which I believe was a Lifetime movie, Is the, or a, was it a Hallmark movie? Uh, do you remember? I think it might have been TNT. Oh, I think you might be right. Uh, yeah, Matthew Perry from Friends, yes. not to be confused with Joey from Friends. Not to be confused with Joey. Uh, our, our Patreon pal. Uh, we, <laughs> we're doing the Ron Clark story next week. It's all on YouTube, or at least it was when I looked it up last week. So, that's gonna be very fun. Uh, and then we're going to watch Pearl Islands this summer. Thomas, do you know why I am so strongly suggesting we watch Pearl Islands this summer? Why is that? Do you have any idea why? No. Okay. Well, it is Sandra's first season, and okay. we know Heroes versus not nope not Heroes versus Villains. All two, all two, all winners <laughs> is coming up. She's gonna be on that. She's gonna be on Island of the Idols. But there's another reason, and I'm not gonna tell you right now. But big Survivor fans know. Hardcore Survivor fans know why Pearl Islands is a good season to watch this summer. And I'm not going to tell you. I want you to keep an eye out for it. You'll know why I suggested this season for this summer once we get to it. And I'm, I'm, okay. I want you to keep that in mind as we watch this season. And I'm going to ask you about it when we finally get to it. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, DYWSLN. It's I don't know. I don't use the Twitter a lot, especially not in the off season. But during our Pearl Islands watch, I might tweet about twenty-nine-year-old uh, Sandra Diaz Twine a lot and be like, "Wow, what a great move!" Did you know she was twenty-nine in her first season? I guess we were crazy. We we were kids, so adults were just adults. But like, that's how old I'm going to be in like nine months. 
Why am I not on Survivor yet? Thomas, here's the thing. Before we end this episode, I just want to say, I went to a murder mystery party last night, and I solved the murder mystery before it was meant to be solved. I just want that out there. I want everybody to know that. You want everyone to be impressed by that? Yes. And I just want to remind you, you said I wouldn't even make it to the merge. And I won no, the fucking wouldn't. murder mystery party, so... That's that's not Survivor. Uh, it's very similar. I formed an alliance. I was sneaky. People were suspicious of me. But I won. So, you can hit me up on Twitter at Jake Scheidel if your name is Jeff Probst and want to put me on the show. You can follow me at Tom. Not Tom. Yep. Uh, if you want to make fun of Jake for thinking that he... Uh, can win Survivor Th- because he won a murder mystery I thing. did win a murder mystery thing. I solved the murder. And now the guy's not murdered anymore. Yeah, that's, that's how that works. Making a distinction between life and law. Odds favor the former when you wear a mask. Massacres are forming in the reflection. And I'm trying not to turn into a psychopath. Better to have lost it than to find it tossed out. That's what I'm telling myself. Was it not better than nothing? Ridge Epson came out with a new album this week. It's, it's very good. Tyler the Creator also came out with a new album that is also very, very good. Okay. Um, Highly recommend that you listen to that. He's he's doing. Did you did you like Flower Boy? Did you listen to that at all? Uh, I listened to like a few songs from it, but I never really uh, got super into it. From what I remember, he's moving more and more into what his strengths are, which is his production. So mm. it's more and more instrumental okay. as he goes along. Okay. Um, with you know guess sort of filling in a little bit he's that he he's not rapping as much as he did uh it's really good okay. i would very very highly recommend it okay yeah i'll check that out but yeah uh dedicated is also very dedicated good, is good um money in the bank is happening in a few hours uh do you have any predictions for that who's winning the women's i uh who i haven't watched any of the build who who is in i think dana brooke is gonna win the ladies oh, one that because be that's amazing. what i want it's that's what I want to happen. I could do that. I don't think it'll actually happen, but I want it. Uh, who's in the men's match? Uh, Ricochet. Um, Braun was in it, but I think he lost to Andrade. No, that doesn't make sense. But Andrade, Sienna Almas is in it. You mean just Andrade? Because we're not allowed yeah, to call no, him. Yeah, no, I'm going to call him Andrade Cien Almas because that's his yeah, real it's way name. Yeah, ba- it's way better, but we're not allowed to call him that anymore. <laughs> well, it's like, Bi- in- it's like Biggie Langston. They ruined a cooler name. Yeah. It is weird to call him Biggie Langston now, though. It sounds weird now because it's been so yeah, long. Yeah, because we've been, been calling Biggie. the other thing for so long. Um, uh, let me look. Let me look. Yeah, I, I, I like looked at it. Oh, Sami Zayn is in it. I think he might win. Oh, this is in the Intercont- This is for the Intercontinental title. No, no, this is for the Money in the Bank contract. Yeah, but Finn Balor is in Oh, it. Intercontinental Champion Finn Balor. Yeah. That's why it says that first. Yeah, Finn Balor's Finn, IC Sammy Champion Zane. right now. He's not doing uh, I think Drew McIntyre is going to win. I could see that happening. They do love him. Why are they calling Mustafa Ali just Ali now? Uh, Because Mustafa sounds too brown, probably. And you know that Vince doesn't like brown folks. Well, he just also doesn't like longer names, which is dumb so he got rid of cn almas which are four and five letter words and kept andrade which i mean fair andrade is a lot more fun to say than almas but (laughs) whatever i'm gonna call him by their full name anyway yeah i think why don't they call her naomi i I think drew is gonna win and i because i want dana brooke to win i think she's gonna win that i think it's gonna be bailey wins the women's and why? What is the point of that? Well, they've been building... Bailey and Becky have been building a few. I don't care. That's fucking stupid. Fuck that. But it, it hasn't been a feud, like a WWE sanctioned feud. It's one of those, like, this is bubbling up, why hasn't this happened yet kind of feuds that WWE will catch on to. And I think this could be the catalyst. The thing is, you could always just build to that. She doesn't need to win Money in the Bank for that to happen. I mean... Yeah, but... Money in the Bank is how you create new stars. You don't need to give it to an established person. But, like, how established is Bailey? Bailey is very... Bailey has been around for a long time and is very established. But, she's one of the four horsewomen. Yeah, but she's number four. She's won, the, she's, she's won the title, like, twice. Yeah, but... 
They they need something for her to do now that Sasha's gone and they lost the tag belts. So, I, no, I it think should putting, be Ember. It should be Ember Moon it or should Dana. Definitely be Ember Moon, but I doubt that's gonna happen. I don't see them pushing her. No, I think she's in that match the same way that that Ricochet is in the other one, where it's like the, this person is gonna do a bunch of spots. Yeah, like yeah. which is fine. I mean that that always makes the matches more interesting. But yeah, uh, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. There's no there's no match where I'm like really excited about it, but there's no match where I'm like dreading it either. Which I think yeah. makes for a good pay per view, I guess. I'm probably gonna cut all of this out. <laughs> I forgot we were still recording. <laughs> Glad to hear it.